Okay, I'd like you to grab a chair. We're gonna move into a chair psoas stretch. As we're here, I'm gonna give you a static option, meaning you can just stay in that chair, seated profile, and breathe. Or you can add a little movement because sometimes when we're holding postures for a while, we need a little bit of movement so we're not sitting into the joints. Make sure the front foot, so we're gonna start with our dominant leg back. And which is your dominant leg? If you're left-handed, your dominant leg is your right leg. If you're right-handed, the dominant leg is your left leg. So it's the opposite leg. We move in opposition. Unless you've had a severe injury where you've had a cast on for over six months, you can pretty much guarantee that your opposite leg is gonna be stronger for stability and you're gonna use it more frequently. Opposite of your dominant arm. So you have that leg back because that's gonna open up that posturally tight hip flexor and quadricep. Feel free to inhale the outside arm up. Exhale to side bend towards the chair. Inhale to come back up. And exhale to twist your body towards the chair. And you can take the hand down holding on. And then you can come back to center, inhale the arm up. Exhale to side bend. Inhale to lift. Exhale, arm lowers as you twist towards the chair. So you can keep that going if you want movement. And if you're doing that, make sure every time you inhale and you, you lift the arm, you pull the pelvis down in opposition. So I don't want your side body, your obliques getting shorter. Make sure the shoulders are plugged down. Imagine my hands on your shoulder blades. Really reach the front ribs towards my hands, closing off that rib cage. If there's pressure on either of your in either of your knees, make sure you're really pushing through the front foot and all five metatarsals of your back foot. Pull the low belly in with each exhale and pull the inner thighs back to the wall behind you. You're doing great. If at any time you need to come out of this posture because it becomes too much, you can always make your way into a child's pose or a forward fold of some sort. So know that that's always an option if holding this posture for three and a half minutes, which is our level two deep flexibility, becomes too much for you. We're still here though, breathing, working into that dominant legs hip flexor. We have one more minute, plugging the shoulders down, feeling the lower abdominals pulling in and up. Inhale, pelvis pulls down. Exhale, inner thighs pull back. Inhale, pelvis pulls down. Exhale, twisting, wringing out those ribs if you're doing the moving variation. Now, if, you're, if it's enough to just hold the posture, maybe the outside hand is on the hip with the thumb on the bony protrusion of your hip and the fingers all pointing down towards the floor. You're thinking about your shoulder blades retracting and pulling together. All the fingers are webbed together, pointing to the floor, except the thumb, which is guiding that bony protrusion of the hip out to the side, feeling the width of your pelvis, and then allowing it to sit heavier into the chair. Inhale. And exhale. Slowly make your way to the second side, being mindful of the front foot, staying fully connected to the floor. Do take a block or a book underneath that front foot if you don't have enough pressure that if that chair was moved out from underneath you, you couldn't hold a lunge. So you should be lifting your core. Stretching is active. Even if it's static, there's activity in the breath, there's activity in the abdominals internally. So you can allow your mind to relax, but your body in certain areas does need to remain alive and alert. So shoulder blades retracted, whether the hands on the hip with the thumb on the bony protrusion of the hip, fingers pointing down to the floor. Pull the pelvis towards the bottom of the chair, towards the floor on the inhales. Lift up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee on your exhale to lengthen your torso. We all want long, strong looking abdomen. And the more you learn to initiate and use your core for movement, especially when you twist and you bend, the longer those muscles are going to get and the leaner. Now, if you're doing our active variation, as the arm goes up, the pelvis pulls down. As you side bend, the inner thighs pull back. As you lift back up, the front ribs close, 
pulling towards the back body. As you twist, the low abs pull in. We have one more minute here. Stay with it. Use your breath. I prefer Ujjayi breathing because I like to keep my TVA always active. And your TVA is your transverse abdominus. And the transverse abdominus protects the low back. It's the deepest layer of the core. And often it's very underworked. You can work it by pulling the core in and fogging a mirror with your exhale by lifting up on those muscles. So it's the lips can remain relaxed. You don't have to purse them. And you can think more of an ocean breath. I find that to be more relaxing than fogging a mirror or Darth Vader-like sound. So ocean breath with the belly pulled in towards the spine. And let's twist one more time towards the chair or bend or just be where you are. We're going to slowly make our way to the floor. We need our second to heaviest loop band and it's going to come around our outer thighs. We're going to lie on our stomach prone for a quadricep stretch. Now, if when you lie on your stomach, you can't reach back and grab your foot, same hand as, or same foot as hand, um, then you can take a loop band to wrap around the foot to grab to bring it closer. But we have the second to heaviest loop band around our outer thighs to remind us to pull out a little bit, keeping our legs hip distance apart. And we're lying prone, kicking our dominant leg. And remember, that's the opposite leg of your dominant arm towards your butt. The same hand as that leg is going to catch that foot and you're going to point the toes or flex them and we're going to hold this prone quadricep release. So starting with the dominant leg kicking towards the bum, other hand supports the forehead. So the knuckles on the forehead, head face planting if it feels better to turn your head to the side as long as that doesn't aggravate the neck. We are going to be here for a bit. So I think keeping the head centered will probably make your neck happier in the long run. So keep your low abs in, the leg that's extended long behind you, make sure the toes are pointed and that foot is resting on the top of the mat. And the leg that's lifted, the toes should be pointed here. We wanna actually engage the adductor line to bring that leg in. Plug the shoulders down the back and use your breath, inhale and exhale be with that breath inhale and exhale and if at any time this becomes too much an active variation of stretching out the tops of the knees could be coming to sphinx pose and doing double leg kicks inhale exhale kick kick and switch you could do this variation if holding this posture is not serving you well today. Breathe here, inhale. And exhale. Ujjayi breath. Let's do a four count. Inhale, two, three, four. And exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Ujjayi breath. Inhale, two, three, four four and exhale two three four inhale two three four exhale two three four inhale two three four and exhale two three four we've got one minute left option to move into sphinx and do double leg kicks or you can move into foam rolling the quadriceps by taking your foam roller under your thighs, keeping this band on. So single leg kicks, if you're doing double, you're going kick, kick, and switch. Kick, kick, and switch. So it's single leg, excuse me, I said double leg. Kick, kick, and switch. Kick, kick, and switch. Push down and out into those arms. Keep the low belly engaged, shoulder blades together, chin lifted. Legs are hip distance apart. 20 more seconds here if you're doing our active variation. If you're lying prone, stay with that breath. Each inhale, you pull the pelvis towards the feet. Each exhale, the inner thighs pull down, rooting you to the ground, keeping the bony protrusions of the hips heavy and the low abs in. Five more seconds here. Five, four, three, two, 
One, let's make our way to the opposite side in our prone position. Static stretch here and let's breathe together. We're gonna inhale, two, three, four, ujjayi breath. Inhale, pelvis pulls towards the bottom of the mat. Pelvic floor muscles pull in and up towards the crown of the head. Inhale, pelvis pulls down. Exhale, low belly pulls in, ujjayi breath. Continue that. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. If you do not have back or knee issues, you can have your legs together here, but I would advise if there's back or knee issues, ujjayi breath to use your low abs as well as legs remaining hip distance apart. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, ujjayi breath. We have one minute remaining, option to roll the quadriceps, option to move back into sphinx for your single leg kicks. Getting into these posturally tight muscles is really important and taking time for recovery if you are into a sport or if you, if you like to do a lot of cardio or strength work, you have to complement that with flexibility. And with your posture, with lordosis and kyphotic lordotic, you have a lot of flexibility naturally. But there are areas that can throw you out of alignment and cause you to not gain the strength in certain areas that will improve your functional movement and enhance your sports performance. So make it make an effort to get in at least two days of some flexibility, if not weaving it in throughout workouts with strength and toning and cardio. All right, another couple seconds here. And then we are going to come to lie supine on our roller. Now, as long as you have a full length roller, this will work. If you're working with a half roller, then perhaps doing a wall stretch variation for the pec minor would be better. But we're lying supine with the tailbone at the bottom, head at the top. You can keep the band around the outer thighs. And you're just going to bring your arms into cactus. Gravity will do the rest. And we're going to focus on our breath and the release of the pec minor and anterior delts. So tailbone at the bottom. Head at the top, arms come into cactus, elbows in the same plane as the shoulders, forearms facing up to the sky, palms facing the sky or ceiling. And now soften the front body towards the back body, pinch the shoulder blades around the roller, plug the shoulders down the spine. If the back is a little uncomfortable, you can tuck the booty like a scared puppy, flattening the low back into the roller. If you want a challenge for your inner thighs, you can bring the legs together completely. Challenge the balance, engage the adductors here. If you feel the front of the thighs though and the groin area, those hip flexors working, I'd advise you to not do that for now and focus on the relaxation and flexibility of the front body. Tuck the booty under, really allow your low back to flatten into the floor Flatten into the roller or floor if you're on the floor. Keep the front ribs reaching for the back body and wrap those shoulder blades. Pull them into the roller actively. If you want to add some movement, you can press the arms overhead on your inhale, feeling the pelvis reach towards the bottom of the mat as you do that. Exhale as you pull them back in. Pelvic floor muscles lift in and up. Inhale, pelvis pulls down as you press up. Exhale, pelvic floor muscles pull up as you pull down. Keep that going. And if it feels nice to just hold statically, honor where you are today and stay with that static stretch. The most important thing is that you're connecting with your breath, 
Oftentimes it re- helps relax the nervous system if you close your eyes. And this is a exercise, as long as those legs aren't together, that's pretty easy to close your eyes and allow the body to do what it knows it's doing right now, which is either relaxing into the stretch, using the breath, or adding a little movement, pushing and bending those elbows, pushing the arms up and bending. You have one more minute here. Option to take the hands all the way down to the side of the body and then keeping the arms straight, inhale to lift them overhead like Frankenstein, all the way overhead, frontal raise, starting at the hip, taking them overhead. So not angels, just lifting overhead and lowering back down by the hips. So all the way from the hips to overhead, above the head like you're taking off a hat and then all the way down to the hips. So whatever variation you're doing, commit to your breathing. Exhale as the arms come down. Inhale as the arms go up. Hear that Darth Vader fog and air sound. Don't purse your lips. Just open the mouth and let that air out. Another 10 seconds here. Keep it slow, whatever variation you're doing, increasing the length of each inhale and exhale. Finish up whichever one you're on, and we're going to slowly make our way to a side-lying position. Make sure you have something to pad your head. I like the small anti-burst ball. Some people prefer a pillow or a yoga block. You can keep the band on or take it off for this one. The band's kind of helpful in keeping the legs stacked here. But we'll start in a fetal position and you need your trigger ball and something to pad your head. I want you to start with your top leg being your dominant leg. And so remember your dominant leg is the same leg as your non on the same side as your non-dominant arm. So your non-dominant arm, the same leg on that side as your dominant leg. I want you to begin by taking the trigger ball below the knee uh, medially to the posterior tibialis. The top leg drops forward. Bring the top leg forward and place the ball, place the ball under the top leg's knee immediately. And you're side lying. So you should be lying all the way down, pillow under the head. And we'll move, we'll bend the knee, we'll move back and forth, getting into the posterior tibialis here. A lot of tender spots. Just be with your breath. And this, this is obviously active. You can point your toes here a little. Sometimes that helps you find more spots. And if it's feeling pretty good, then I'd try taking it above the knee and seeing how that feels. So right above the knee, still medially, there's a spot that helps it's a fascia line that helps to drop the femur bone down into the socket. So if you've done any, you know, higher impact walking or jogging or running or jumping, sometimes that femur bone gets height and it pulls on the low back, causes a lot of discomfort. It's a great way to reset. Keep going here, relaxing into this release. Play around with the different points where you may need more attention. Breathing into that. Now, we still have a minute. If you have worked through all those knots, you can take this ball and place it behind you to get into your anterior delt. So you're gonna stretch the bottom arm forward and you're gonna find your tricep and you're gonna find the divot between your tricep and your upper arm on that bottom arm. And you're going to place the ball there. Might be very tender, you're gonna move the arm. If you have just lordosis and not kyphosis, this will probably be pretty tender. You're gonna reach the arm forward and back. So retracting and protracting that shoulder blade as that arm moves forward and back. Try to keep your hips stacked, stay forward. Could be very intense for some people it is. Breathe here, and this should be your dominant arm, so it, it could be rather intense. Hang there, just another 40 seconds, digging into those fibers, 
They need your attention. They can actually cause all kinds of neck discomfort when your when your anterior delts get really, really tight. I excuse me, when your posterior delts get really tight, they can cause the side of the neck, more the side of the back of the neck to be aggravated. Scalene area, little bit of the neck extensors. So another 10 seconds here, getting into that those posterior delts. And let's slowly make our way to the second side. So we began with our posterior tibialis. So medially below the knee, take your time, setting up on the second side. And this knee will probably not be as much of an issue. Remember below the knee, right near the knee though, near the tibia bone. And play around with kind of turning that, th that thigh, that leg from the hip socket in and out to, and really digging in as much as you can tolerate the pressure pushing down. Hear your breath. Watch out for the chin falling to the chest. You may be watching what you're doing, but we don't want to strain the neck in the process. So keep the chin lifted. Your leg knows what to do. Keep the abs engaged. Point your toes just to keep the leg a little more active so you can find spots that are tender from when your legs are fired up. Keep the low belly in. It's going to want to chill. Needs to stay in. Find, find a tempo that works for you. Maybe it's inhaling for a count of five and exhaling for a count of five. Maybe it's longer. Maybe it's shorter. But whatever you're doing, try to, try to find a tempo and commit to that so that you keep breathing consistently. And you can hook in to your low abs by incorporating that ujjayi breath. That's also great for your heart health because you're actively breathing with some initiation from the core contracting. All right, we've got another minute. If you want to take that up to the top of the knee, as we did before, not the top, right above the knee, medially, this is the spot. And then you're going to put it right there. And again, applying as much pressure as you can tolerate, digging in. So point the toes. Keep breathing. And we'll be here for another 30 seconds or so. If you need to stay longer, feel free to stay longer. If you need to go back to the posterior tibialis, go back to that area. But in 30 seconds, I'd like to move to the posterior delts. And remember, that's between the tricep and the upper arm so there's a little divot most people can find and I want you to put it in that divot of your bottom arm the arm that's closest to the floor and you'll plug the shoulders down and you'll reach the arm forward and back retracting and protracting your shoulder blade you can even internally and externally rotate that arm in the socket to get into those fibers now we'll be here for 30 seconds if you notice wow this is not really an issue and the other side was a major issue you can take it back to the first side for this posterior delts or maybe the posterior tibialis on the other side since it was your dominant side needs more attention you're going to in 30 seconds we're going to spend our final minute on whatever area presented the most ouch quality when we were in it like whoa that needs a little attention so you're going to check in with the body now Think about what stretch needs a little more attention. 15 seconds, hang out here. Keep digging into the non-dominant side, breathing, keeping your shoulders plugged down. Five, four, three, two. Let's switch to wherever we need the most attention for our final minute. Find that. And breathe into that area. So ujjayi breathing. 
exhaling. If your mind is chattering, maybe you want to repeat a mantra similar to transcendental meditation. You could say so on your inhale and you could say hum on your exhale. And you could keep repeating that in your head. Hear your voice. It's often helpful to say it out loud one time. So hum and listen to yourself say it. And then begin repeating it in your mind. And keep a nice, slow tempo. Another 30 seconds here. Five seconds. Go ahead and wrap it up. Slowly make your way up to a seated position. We're going to make our way to a wall. We're going to bring our legs up the wall and open them out to the side for an adductor stretch. You'll want to take this band off your outer thighs for this one. And make sure as you're bringing the legs up the wall, you do this slowly and your abs are braced. If you have low back issues, give me that ujjayi breath with the belly pulled in towards the spine as the legs come up the wall. And slowly, not quickly, it's not Cirque du Soleil, we're going to take our legs out to the side into a deep second position, opening up our adductor chain. I'd advise pointing the toes or flexing the feet one or the other to keep the legs active. Because if the foot goes pigeon-toed or inverts at all, it does affect the knees. And when the legs are open like that, that can be a strain. So it's important that you breathe here. I want you to inhale, feel your pelvis pulling towards the ground. Exhale, feel your inner thighs pulling towards the wall in front of you. So they're pulling, pulling, pulling. You're getting some activity. Inhale, pelvis grounds down. Exhale, inner thighs pulling towards the wall so whatever was working for you maybe it's so hum so on your inhale hum on your exhale or perhaps it's inhale two three four five and fog a mirror <sighs> inhale two three four five Darth Vader Inhale, two, three, four, five, ocean breath. Keep that going. If at any time your knees are bothering you or it's becoming too much, you can slide the legs straight up 90 degrees. You can take a little break. You can bring your hands to your sides, palms up, bringing the pointer fingers and the thumbs together in our root chakra mudra. This is the, this, our root chakra is located at the base of our tailbone sacrum area, and it presents us with safety and security. So when our hands are in this mudra, we can think we are safe and we can breathe into any unpleasant or nervous thoughts we're having and just exhale them out knowing we can always come back to a comforting position like we're in now. Opening the legs out to the side when you're ready for a little more heat if you want to deepen into that stretch. We have one minute left. If you've had enough, be here with the legs up the wall in this excellent restorative posture. Your root chakra mudra, eyes closed, gaze soft if they're open, shoulders plug down the back. Ujjayi breath. Lift your chin a little bit, allowing that throat chakra to open up. Go ahead and feel that pelvis on your inhale, pulling towards the floor. Exhale, inner thighs pull towards the wall thereon. 
Again, inhale, pelvis pulls down towards the floor as if it's rooting down like a tree. Exhale, inner thighs pull towards the wall, deepening the posture. On your next inhale, prepare by pulling the pelvis towards the floor. Exhale, brace the abs and slowly make your way off the wall, coming down on whatever side feels most comfortable into a side fetal position and making your way back onto your hands and knees. You're going to take your second to heaviest loop band around your upper arms, above your elbows. And then if you don't have any back issues, your legs can be together. If you have any back or knee issues, back or knee issues, feet hip distance apart. I'd like you to tuck your toes under, pulling out on that band just a little bit to feel your scapular stabilizers. When we inhale and send the hips back into down dog, I want you to press your forehead into this band, engaging your neck flexors. So sending the pelvis back into down dog, send the hips up, push the forehead into the band, engaging the front of the neck. Separate the feet hip distance if you're having any back issues. And from here, option to do a little pedaling of the feet to get into those calves. Keep the forehead pushing into the band. Pedal those calves on your exhales. Pause and feel your pelvis pull down towards the feet on the inhale. Exhale, pedal and lift up through your lower abdominals. Keep pulling out on that band with the arms, pushing down to the floor with the hands, pushing into the band with the forehead. If at any point in time you're fatiguing, feel free to come to all fours and begin cat and cow. Making sure as you're doing cat and cow that you exhale when you arch and you're in cow pose and you inhale when you round. And why are we doing that? Because when we extend, we're reinforcing bad posture and I want you bracing your abs as you do that. And as you round, it's like a release. So you can inhale into that to prepare to keep your low back safe as you arch in cow pose. If you're in down dog, keep breathing. Send that, those hips up, pedal those feet out. Use your breath. Going to be here for another 10 seconds. You're doing great. And after a few more seconds, lower those knees down to the floor. And we're going to take our knees down to the floor. We're going to make our way into child's pose. I'd like you to place your wrist on the roller. You can take the band off. Knees hip distance apart or as wide as the mat. Wrist on the roller. Arms extended out in front of you. Let that chest and head fall forwards towards the floor. Palms facing in. Child's pose. Push down and out into the arms. And it may feel good for it to be up the top of the forearm, maybe all the way down by the wrist, by the hand. See where it feels best. Keep dropping the pelvis towards the heels. Inhale, pelvis pulls towards the heels. Exhale, inner thighs pull back to the wall behind you. Inhale, two, three, four, ujjayi breath. As you're here, Let's really use our breath. Keep your eyes closed. Visualize a clock. See a clock in your mind's eye. I want you to inhale. And as you exhale and sit back deeper onto the heels, you watch the hands of the clock go from 12 to 1 o'clock. Inhale. Exhale from 1 to 2. Inhale. Exhale from 2 to 3. Inhale, exhale from, I forgot where I was. You know where I was. Breathe, three to four. And inhale, exhale, four to five. Inhale, exhale, five to six. Inhale, exhale, six to seven. Inhale, exhale, seven to eight. Inhale, exhale, eight to nine. Inhale, exhale, nine 
to 10. Inhale, exhale, 10 to 11. And inhale, exhale, 11 to 12. Slowly make your way up, fluttering those eyes open, coming to a comfortable seated position. Great job. 